Hello everyone, and Mr. 13 Things is back at you drafting in SketchUp or sketching in SketchUp this log uh, square root spiral. And what we started with was this is a length of one. I hope you can see my cursor. If not, we'll try it one more time. Length of one, square root of one squared plus one squared is square root of two. This becomes the square root of three, square root of four, square root of five, square root of six. Each of these is a square a right triangle with a length of one on the side. So I'm gonna go, I've moved this and shifted it so it's actually back on axes and I'm gonna go and do the next one again, a little bit slower this time. I'm gonna let you know that of course I came into a model, the first thing I would do would be come into a model and check its um, units and I've set everything up to inches. The base unit of SketchUp it turns out is the inch but you really generally don't have to deal with that too much except when you get into some coding stuff. I have turned the axes on. I do that with view, section, plane, axes on and off. I'll leave them off for now and I'm gonna go through now and set up. Uh, I will also point out that I've changed the standard view to be a top view and a, and a parallel projection. In other words, now I'm drafting kind of in 2D. So I'm gonna go ahead and change my coordinate system there and there it's kind of locked them up which is of course my you might want to have the axes shown I know I'm going to draft a line interesting I'm just going to go in the right direction here and then say one in the VCB which is the bottom right side of the control box I usually have to basically do that so I finish that out then I go right click and erase there's probably a better way to do that but I just makes it easier for me when I go from software to software. I'm going to go from there to there. We've got the next one drafted. What I'm doing each time is right click on the inside and getting rid of the, uh, the face which is automatically drawn. Now I can, you don't have to go back and reset to zero but I want to show you that if you go over the right click over the top of the uh, axes and then say reset it takes it back to the kind of the world coordinate system. So I'll try it again. Once again I'm going to go here I'm clicking along there. I'm kind of trying to set. You can see it likes to try to grab. Sometimes it's going the wrong direction. And then it likes to grab 90 degrees. I now have that. I can again go. It's going to tend to hold those directions. There's special keys to push. I probably have to go through how to do that as I review to keep myself more ensconced in SketchUp nowadays. Cool program. If you live in any one of 48 states, 46 states, Lots of countries in the world, you can get it free from Trimble for your school with a one-page agreement. All right, so we're going to click there. I'm going to go from there to there. Actually, I like to draft things in the right direction. I didn't really do that. That should be radiating out, but now we have it. I don't have to go back, it turns out, to reset the axes. I'm going to do this all the way through till I get and prove that, in fact, you go around 17 times. 17 of these little one... Uh, length of one legs is how many you will get before you double back on itself. You notice here I'm a little bit off. It might throw you, but the fact is I now am not perfectly horizontal because this is, does not turn out to be an exact number. I'm going to go here again. I go to the end there. I lock to the 90 degrees. I now go here, holding, saying typing one. Sometimes what some people will do, I can hit a space bar. I guess I don't need to completely wig out. I'm going to go to there grab it once again right click and erase I'll try it again I'm going to grab my axes here go to there it's locking it likes to lock correctly I'm gonna go I can type really long and then type one that's pretty useful for many you notice the I'm gonna I could hit the space bar instead of the um, the arrow icon that's actually a better habit to get but it differs from software to software. So part of what we do when we're going between softwares is sometimes we're not the most efficient in any one, but we don't have to kind of learn a different set of rules for different ones. I'll show you what I mean with this next one. Once again, I'm gonna go here, click this here, establish that coordinate system. We call that our standard position angle. Now, a lot of people who know how to draft in AutoCAD, dare I say it, know how to offset pretty well. So I can grab this. Grab, so what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the thing. I'm telling the copy move and then I'm hitting a control key and I'm moving it now along that distance. I'm typing one. 
So it has actually made a second one of these, which means I can now draft from there to there. Not the most efficient in the world, but it does help you sometimes if you're just trying to come from AutoCAD to learn to use it because you do a lot of that kind of offset thing. You'll see that AutoCAD is coming more towards SketchUp than SketchUp towards AutoCAD when it comes to some of these things. In the end, it is all math. I am going to, I don't like to say math in a bad way, but pretty much that's what it is. So I'm now I'm going to go a distance of one. Remember each of these, each time I just go here, I type one. You notice what I'm trying to do here each time is to draft in the spiral out. It's always a good idea to think about which direction you're drawing lines. SketchUp really works more like faces and that's not so much in, in, in embedded in it, but the fact is if, if something is going from left to right, drawing from left to right. That's just one of my bad little rules. Okay, we're going to grab there. We're guessing that we're going to get to 17 by the time we're done. We're going through here, typing 1. There we go, hitting a space bar this time, getting smarter about it, going from line to line. Each time there is a setting, I think, that'll tell it to not do faces, but the default is pretty much in SketchUp is to draw faces. I'm mean, once again set this here. Going now, if you noticed, I grabbed it wrong, so I want to go and get it right this time. You got to be very careful when you're doing this. You're setting things up. There you go. We're going to go one. When we get to 17, we'll stop typing one. Space bar to clear my palette, if you would, is what I like to say. Going to grab that from there to there. You most my habit, I should be hitting the space bar to clean my palette. I'll try to do that next time. Once again, change my axes. What I'm doing is I'm stand, setting the origin and the standard position angle. Again, I've got this set up to kind of a 2D mode. Once again, I'm going to draft. What I do here when I go this direction, I'm showing it with a positive and a local coordinate, and I say minus 1. In other words, the opposite of that vector. Hit a space bar, draw the line from there to there. Lots of different ways to do these things. However, getting used to what soon that you're doing some sort of vector calculations is a good thing. It is not a bad thing. It is not something to be afraid of. Vector, victor, as they said in airplane, vectors are fine. They are not scary. They just give us magnitude and direction. We're going to go ahead. This time I'll type it really long and then type one. Pretty useful way to draft. Spacebar from line to there to there. We should be getting close to the 17. And so my guess is this next one is going to take us over the limit. So we're going to once again go to here. We're going into giving it the standard position angle. We're coming back here. And now we're going to draft it. Remember each of these we're adding length of one, type one. And now as we hit a space bar and go from line from here, which is to there, we're not quite there. So we must be at 16. Maybe we'll be 17. We're going to see it in one second. We're going to once again go to here. So understanding how you set these axes is really, I've never really done it much. I've wasted a lot of time in SketchUp, it would appear, but I tend to draft in a lot of different engines. I'm going to go ahead and type 1 here. And what's going to happen this next time, I'm not going to draft this line because you're going to see it's going to go over the top and then it'll start cutting that one up. So we don't want to cut these things up. So what we have now, let's think about it. We have the score to 1, score to 2, score to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So 17 before you close the spiral, that would have been 18. I will mathematically do this and code it. And it's not really as bad as it looks, but you can imagine now if I wanted to continue and do this for, I don't know, a hundred times, this would get a little old. So understanding that the code of, of doing this with pure mathematics in Ruby is actually in some ways more exact. This is pretty exact up to here, but over time it would start to get a little bit iffy. So that is the second of two uh, videos showing you how to draft the square root spiral. I'm going to get this wrong. The square root of 2 is called the Pythagoras' number, and the square root of 3 is something like Theodorus' number, and this is like Theodorus' spiral, but I'd have to go to Wikipedia to prove that to myself. Really cool to really and really important to understand that the square roots are not squarey. Donald Duck in the Forest and that classic Walt Disney, Donald Duck in Mathematical Land, points to all of us that the square root is the key to a lot of really cool math. Pythagoras knows it, knew it, knows it, you know it. Thanks for listening.